that was a very beautiful chapter and uh, it's wonderful that since last year and now we can continue our memorization of scriptures the word of god is powerful so we we'll memorize it uh, we'll always have armor against temptations and difficulties in life and also anytime people come to us and ask for our witness we are able to witness to them let us uh, continue our study tonight for the theme of uh, january bearing fruit so just to ask you ahead of time are you bearing fruit are you fruitful and the fruit that you are bearing are fruit that will last forever that is a very wonderful thing that god has given to us and uh, before i go to the message this morning remember our theme was the same and the title of my message our fruit identifies us if you bear the mango fruit that means you're a mango diba? if you bear the uh, banana so you are a banana diba? so whatever is the truth the fruit that is the the plant that uh, produces it now this morning we talked about the evil tree what are the evil tree a sheep teachers who are sheep in sheep's clothing that means as if they are the teachers of God's word but they are really not as if they are religious but they are not really so uh, you can only be sure about someone if, whether his faith is true or not if uh, what is coming out of his body or his life are good things that become a blessing to other people and uh, so the bad tree cannot bear good fruit but the good fruit always will bear good the good tree i mean will always bear the good fruit now so that's the first time first part and we also for the second thought this morning we talked about the good tree so it's supposed to be we who have accepted jesus christ as our savior we are trees that are good and uh, we are bearing fruit and uh, so as we produce the food not the fruit many things are included in the fruit uh, first salvation that means believing in jesus christ as personal savior and uh, then uh, for the other things that dubai was uh, giving us uh, knowledge of the truth knowing the truth realizing the truth and witnessing about the truth and submission to the lord jesus christ as our lord and master and uh, willingness to obey his will and his word so all this if uh, you and i have have our fruit that is godly and uh, spiritual that means truly we are standing on the the tree i mean on jesus christ who, who gives us the spiritual fruit that is needed so there are two things here that we started this morning uh, the uh, uh, the first one is the negative thing and the other is the positive thing like i mentioned this morning there are two gates no one is the wide gate one is the narrow gate but it is the narrow gate that is going to eternal life we also talked about uh, the wide way or the large street you know very wide street and the narrow way and to walk with the lord is to walk in the narrow way but in the main street where there are it's very very uh, accommodating to everybody it is not it does not lead to life eternal yes. and then it, we talk also about destiny or things in the future so uh, if we have faith in the lord it leads to life otherwise it is our lives will be leading to destruction through groups of people in the day of on the day of the judgment of god people who have follow the lord and people who disobey the lord so they will be judged according to who they are in this life two kinds of trees the good tree 
and the bad tree. We already mentioned that. And two kinds of fruit, the good fruit and the bad fruit. And uh, so in my life, the result will be good fruit if I obey the Lord. And then uh, we said about two kinds of builders, the wise builder and the foolish builder. When the typhoon came, the foolish build, uh, builder lost his house because it was only standing on the sand. But anybody is wise builder if he uh, puts up his spiritual house on the rock. And you know, the rock is Jesus Christ according to the Bible. And then finally we talked about two kinds of foundations. The rock, who is Christ, and the house on the sand, which is the house that, is, that belongs to this world. So that is our message. It was a message this morning. Our Id fruit identifies who you are. So in your life, can your friend or neighbor or family see the fruit of Jesus Christ in you so that they will say, truly you are uh, a real Christian and we are proud of you that you are a brother, you are our sister, you are fa our father or mother, that truly you are bearing good fruit and sh you know, transferring that good fruit to you, to the children in the family. So briefly here, the fruit full Christian. So it's uh, an addition to what we have studied this morning. And again, we uh, look at Matthew chapter 7. So the Christian must bear good fruit. That was mentioned here by the Lord. The good fruit. Uh, it must be that uh, I, we must have this kind of fruit. So in the verses 16 to 19, that was our uh, reading a while ago, you shall know the, them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of, th or th of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So uh, in connection with that fruit, uh, if you remember what you have st studied before in the Old Testament in uh, Psalm chapter 1, I think uh, many of you could memorize Psalm chapter 1. It's a very beautiful uh, passage of scriptures and uh, it is uh, familiar to us because the words are, look, listen to the words. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. His delight in the love of the Lord. Now verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So the, the Bible says, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to bear fruit. <coughs> so verse 16, it says that, we are recognized by the fruit of our lives. <coughs> Just a minute. So we must be bear, bearing fruit if we are <coughs> true Christians and growing in the Lord. We bear fruit in season. That means bearing fruit at the right time. <coughs> so have you noticed that uh, any tree in the world around us, some are bearing fruit at a particular period of the year or particular month. And then the others are not bearing fruit in some other months. And so there is already a season. Though there are plants also that bear fruit any time of the year, like the coconut. It bears fruit any time of the year. <coughs> but for the mango, there are only several months that it will bear fruit. On the other months, it's, uh, they will 
shoulder flowers, but they will have less fruit because it is not season for the mango. So, if you have uh, fruit, you are fruit bearing at the right time, that means uh, in chapter, chapter one, the writer said, its leaves do not wither. What are leaves? I mean, maybe he means they're your life or the things that you do in your life and then your relationship with the Lord or relationship with loved ones and neighbors. So it's uh, symbolized with the leaves that do not wither. They do not grow old. They continue to bear fruit. And whatsoever he does prospers. So the man who has uh, obedience to the Lord and uh, does his will, he will have that important uh, uh, gift from the Lord, whatever he does, prospers. Now, as we look back to your life, to my life, there are many things that we wanted to do or we planned to do or started to do, but now it's not there anymore. It did not progress because maybe uh, we, ha we invested in the wrong place. Maybe you, we do not have the, the capacity or the ability to, to run that business or that, uh, that, uh, that uh, farm or what. So it will not prosper. But uh, the Lord is reminding us as Christians uh, that uh, we are in the world and we should bear fruit. And in that, you know, you could uh, go near the Lord and any time that you could plant, it will continue to grow and bear fruit later on. And so, fruitfulness is very important. And uh, one of the purposes why God made trees and plants is because they bear fruit and they will add to our bodies, you know, the vitamins, the minerals, and the, the sustenance for our lives. Now the letter B here I wrote, fruit in our season, first fruit bearing at the right time, then fruit even when it is out of season. What are fruits that are out of season? That's very interesting because it is connected with, uh, with me, old people. It's a beautiful verse in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now remember what Paul is saying? You, you preach the word or make a witness about the word of God and uh, it will bear fruit and there is no, no right season for the word of God to be heard by anybody why? because he said here do it in season do it out of season even if people do not like to hear it say it anyway but uh, when you do it it will become fruitful uh, as the Lord has promised so uh, what are the times that are out of season in our time here on earth well maybe when you are in the office that's out of a place where you when you can have Bible study because you have to concentrate on your work in the office but uh, on some other times maybe during the break time you could uh, uh, present you know, your witness about the word of God. That's why it's fruit even when it is out of season or in season, it will continue to bear fruit. And then the third thought that I wrote here, the most beautiful fruit of all is, you know, giving the word of God. I remember one uh, verse that we have memorized from way back in Proverbs 11.30. You also memorized that. It may be the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Tree of life, that is the, the, 
the result of my life of my part, my witnessing i produced tree of life upon the lives of other people who did not have the tree of life because they have not accepted jesus christ as their savior but if we witness to them and share with them so uh, uh, the tree of life also, also will grow in their lives and he that winneth souls is wise so in other words in this one verse uh, showing the tree of life is the same as winning souls witnessing to souls that means i have the tree of life when i have the ability to give these blessings to others and as i give this blessing to others i am winning souls so actually the first phrase in the sentence is expressed in another way in the second phrase in the verse so pariho ang ilang meaning pero gin butang sa first sentence ang usa and then gin butang sa second sentence ang ikaduha so here in the book of Proverbs and in Psalms many chapters that were written here are like that they will express it in, in one aspect and then repeat it in another aspect so that it will be, become more clear to us so the beautiful lesson here is this if you are a believer you have the tree of life and in order to make the tree of life uh, effective towards others is you witness to them that means you win souls so it's not just uh, winning in a lottery or any game it is the most important winning is the winning of souls of people who need the lord and this leads us to the second point the fruit in season and out of season <coughs> then it says here yield fruit even in old age This is a nice verse because this is connected to me because I am now an old man. I am 67 years old. And later on uh, this year, I will be uh, 68 now. So th the years have come so soon. But it says here, let me read to you Psalm 92, verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age and they shall be a father uh, a f be fat and flourishing now some chapter 92 is the sum of an old man so kung may gusto kang ihatag sa inyong lolo or papa nga old na siya you share him some psalm 92 because this is a chapter for old people so what are the things about the old people that is mentioned here they shall still bring forth fruit in old age that's a very exciting uh, comment there you know it's not only the young people who are fruitful the older people are even more fruitful than the youth than the young they are even more effective than the young and they continue to be fruitful even in their old age 60 70 and beyond they can still be witnesses but better witnesses than way back when they were 16 or 17 and 18. so don't say it was much better in my life when i was young i was always in church and always witnessing no if you serve the lord faithfully you will be a more powerful and more uh, effective uh, witness to the lord or teacher when you are grown in your age already and you will uh, be uh, your leaves will always be green according to psalm chapter one you will have green leaves that means fresh na fresh ang imong uh, life ang imong heart sa ginoo because even in your advanced age you have always learned to commit everything to him 
another uh, thought sheet, it takes its root down, downward, in order to get much nourishment. So, the, uh, the tree, in order to bear more fruit, it has to dig deeper in its roots to reach more, uh, more fertilizer down in earth. And as he gets more nourishment, then even that old tree will continue to bear good fruit. And then last thought here, uh, the plant, you plant your life and uh, like this uh, uh, fruit bearing plant. And so you will be able to eat choice fruit. This was written by uh, I, Solomon in Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 16. It's a... Uh, I will read to you. Chapter 4, verse 12, verse 2. Thy teeth shall be like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof of every one bear twins, and none is barren among them. Now, what does, uh, and then it goes to chapter, verse 16, which I put here, no? Awake, O north wind, and come thou, soul, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out, and let my beloved come into his garden and eat his uh, uh, pleasant fruits. So here, uh, choice fruit is pictured here in the Song of, so of Songs. It is actually a, a love poem between a, a man and a woman but he is saying here uh, if there is there is a garden that will bear fruit and that fruit will be enjoyed by most, both the man and his lover and it pictures to us the, the fruit that is given by a faithful life and it become, will become more effective so now let me just review a little bit. Now that you have grown here in Cebu as a professional, you now maybe have a higher position in the company, or some of you have gotten married, you have already children. And so, in other words, you have grown, grown older than before. So what is the result of your service for the Lord? Are you bearing more effectively? the fruit of righteousness, the, root, the fruit of uh, godliness, the fruit of faithfulness. Because this is the description here in the Bible of the fruitful Christian. So nothing is, uh, any time is time for witnessing and serving the Lord. So any time is the time to show our growth in the faith by becoming a help or a witness to other people. So the third thought that I am going to discuss here, and the last one, by their fruit you shall know them. Going back to our text in Matthew chapter 7, it says here in verse 16, we read a while ago, ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of, or thorns? gather grapes out of thorns or figs out of thistles? No. So uh, you must know that uh, whatever is the fruit in your life is a reflection of who you are inside your heart. In other words, what you speak out from your mouth is the reflection of what you think there in your mind and what you have put there in your heart. So be careful with that, be, be careful to grow so that you will be able to connect this important thing to your spiritual service for the Lord. 
So under this I wrote here, uh, this means uh, fruit for eternal life. And so as we bear fruit for eternal life, it's a wonderful kind of uh, fruit that we are uh, thriving uh, on, on the condition of those who maintain a close relationship with the Lord. Just briefly to read uh, another verse in connection with this, James chapter 4, verse 3. I read here, You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. If we are prayerful, but our prayers are only for our lust, the Lord will not answer us. He will not give our request for us. This is uh, the meaning of this statement. Third here is the fruit is uh, the fruit in every good work. Colossians 1.16 Whatever I do, whatever you do, if I have that close relationship with the Lord, there will always be fruit and good fruit. That is because it is promised by the Lord. So Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 I read for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or king or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him so Everything good is the work of God. He created all these things according to this verse for, for His Son, Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.16 And so, as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ will imbue us also, share with us this important uh, ability or skill or, or power to bear fruit. That's why He wants us to be fruitful. And that the world will know that we are truly his disciples if we are fruitful. And then the final thoughts here is this. Uh, the Bible, as we have read, is uh, saying in Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, there should be uh, fruit in season and out of season. So you see, the power of the gospel, you could give it any time. Even when... People are, you know, listening and sitting down or worshiping in a church. You could give the word of God. That is in season. But out of season, it means that even if you just met casually in the street or maybe you are walking along the road and you walk together. So maybe that's part of uh, witnessing out of season. Dili naka nakaplano. Dili naka schedule, but since you met someone whom you think needs the Lord, you witness to him right away. That's what I mean, and I think that is what the Bible means also. You give your witness in season, and then out of season. And then the surprising thing is this. It seems that there were so many people who were one to the Lord when people were directed by the Lord to witness to them and uh, in that actual witness the one who witnessed was thinking parang murag dili right time but you see when the Lord is leading you it is the right time any time is the right time for the Lord so you remember the Ethiopian eunuch on the way after worshipping in Jer Jerusalem going back to Ethiopia and you remember uh, the disciple that uh, uh, passed him by and the Spirit said, okay, you go to him. Philip, you witness to him. And uh, Philip, he witnessed to that Ethiopian eunuch and uh, the Ethiopian eunuch became a Christian. And uh, you know, in recent times, way back in the 50s, 90s, and 60s and 70s, it, it is known that uh, there are Christians in Ethiopia. And even during the time, the emperor during the time was Haile Silasi, Angalan. And uh, he was a Christian. So it seems that what Philip had witnessed to the Ethiopian eunuch 
it multiplied there in Ethiopia. So even way back before in the 1900s, there were many Christians in Ethiopia. And even now, there are many Christians in Ethiopia. Could it be that it was connected to that eunuch to whom Peter witnessed? That there was a, a church in Ethiopia? So you see there, this uh, eunuch and then Peter, they were people who bear fruit because they were obedient to the dictates of the Holy Spirit to witness to somebody, to bring them to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so now, it leads us to this uh, particular verse in Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. This will be our final thoughts here right now. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now when it, mat it, when it comes to relationship with God, when it comes to knowing how to go to heaven and not go to hell anymore, what must be done? So this is, these are the things that uh, must uh, be done. Preach the word that we are. If you are not a preacher, you witness. And how do you do that? It says here, uh, to preach the word means be instant in season. The word instant there, that means be ready anytime to be a witness to somebody else. And every time is a good season to witness for the Lord. And to add to that, he said, out of season, what do you do next? Reprove, when you are reproving something, that means uh, you are trying to let him see uh, carefully from biblical argument the, that he needs understanding on some things that are wrong with him or some things that are in error in his mind, maybe some things that are in error in his heart. And so, as you witness, as I witness, we reprove him concerning these wrong things because if he's willing to leave them and believe in the Lord, he will have his salvation. And then the third thing here is not only uh, reprove, but then he said, in out in season, out of season, reprove and then rebuke. What do you do when you rebuke? This person has continued in his sin and uh, he does not understand that it is terribly wrong if he does this. And so when you rebuke, that means you are now being used with the Lord to correct him. Have you tried to correct, you know, a young, young man or woman concerning some important things? Or maybe have you tried to correct a, a, a brother or sister concerning that? Now, who are the people who usually correct us? At home, it's always our mother. And then later on, kung hurot na ang sermon ni mama, and the next mag sermon, suko na kayo si papa, di ba? So, rebuke. But usually our parents will rebuke us when what we have done is really wrong. And you know, this word rebuke is mentioned here by Paul in Second Timothy chapter 4 because he knows that Christians sometimes do disobey the Lord and they need to be reproved to be corrected so that uh, they will see that they have sinned and then they will be willing to repent of their sins. And then the final term that he used here, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. When you exhort, that means you instruct, you explain. And when you explain to someone, you must be patient. So this is the meaning of with all long suffering and doctrine so it takes a long long time to make a christian grow a new christian especially but even then many old christians they still need to grow because some of them have already forgotten to grow so are you one of those they are christians who have forgotten to keep on growing so okay if we are reminding you 
And Paul is reminding me and you in connection with this. We must exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So when you, you teach someone the word of God to make him grow, it takes a long time. That's why the word used here by Paul is long suffering. It's suffering that is long, really. And then doctrine. Doctrine is very difficult to study. It takes a long time to fully understand doctrine. But these are things that God wants us to do as we uh, develop good fruit upon the lives of people we are acquainted with, especially our family, maybe our relatives, and then our friends in our neighborhood or whoever are the people that the Lord will bring to us. And when we do that, whatever bears fruit in their lives shall be known. And then the world will know. They will say, ah, this person now have, has accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and has obeyed him and followed the word of God. So this is uh, putting together the topic about bearing fruit the fruitful Christian who is fruitful in season and out of season and he is a Christian also who bears fruit even in their old age and that part diba? because the older you grow you must become more effective in your witnessing because you know more about the Bible you know more about Christian life you know more about how to lead people to the Lord and then by finally we talked about by their fruit, ye shall know them. So look at your life. I look at my life. What is the fruit that I can see in my life now? Now that you have gotten older, as we have reached 2018, your, your age will also increase. So are you also in, increasing your effectiveness as a wisdom? witness for the Lord? Are you increasing your ability to know more scriptures so that you could explain and show it to others? So that the gaps in their understanding that they have not understood you will be able to explain to them. So there are many people who are looking for the truth, for the truth. And he wants, they want that the Lord wants that there will be fruit in their lives. So what are we doing? Are we uh, giving them uh, the witness so that uh, we will win them to the Lord and they will be ready for his coming and any time that uh, uh, he, he will come, we will be ready to meet him. So fruit bearing, I hope this week as you go to your office and to your business and your responsibility, go back to your school, you will be reminder of this, reminded of this important assignment the Lord has given us. We must bear fruit. In season, out of season. Say anything and say it in a way that will remind them of the Lord. You could even rebuke if necessary. Uh, but don't forget, to witness is always the most important thing in our lives. He, who knows? No, it might be the last chance for that person to to hear about the Lord, and it is our last chance also to give him our witness. So this is very important to take note. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for your word that has opened to us and reminded us about the importance of telling people about the Lord, bearing fruit in these last days where we live. And uh, with this, we have our last opportunities to witness to others. So may we always be thinking of this goal and motto for this year, bearing fruit, bearing fruit. Other work is more exciting and fruitful than this one. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.